So for 10 days with my mother and with my brother and with my sister, it's very, very poor there. Vietnam in that day, you don't know how poor it was. It start wasting on over. The people is only have so much money to buy for one yard of material a year. How many cup of rice a month? How many pounds of meat per month? And how much sugar and how much bread that they can buy for week? So that is how poor it was. What? So I come and here I'm trying to tell my family that I'm not working for CIA. I saw Vietnam, it was very, very poor. I am okay in the U.S. and I want to come back here to help Vietnamese people. Everybody take my word for it, but they're very, very scared that I may never get out of here and my brother would get out of the party because he is very high uh, level of government. So after I left here, went back to California. My son came and picked me up from the airport. He said, Mom, the FBI want you to call them when you get home. And I thought, FBI want to talk to me. I tried to ask for help from the State Department, from the Washington, D.C., um, from the Sacramento uh, capital of California, and nobody helped me. Now I conquer my dream and I come back and they want to talk to me. Well, I own a restaurant, so I brought a lot of fortune cookie and tea home and offered them to have some tea and we can talk. Well, the first question he asked me was, why did you go to Vietnam? What did you do while you were in Vietnam? And who did you see in Vietnam? I said, why not Vietnam? I am Vietnamese. I see my family. I visit my country. And that's why I go there. And he said, Mrs. Hayslip, you see, in the passport say, as a U.S. citizen, you cannot enter the government, a communist country. And I said, that is what the law say, but I miss my mom, I want to go, so I went. So I tell them that how poor the country, and I want to come back here to help the people, and all beautiful things that I told him. So he said, well, we have somebody that can help you. So he come back with another good-looking man and want me to come back to Vietnam to help them. Not help me or help Vietnamese, but to help them. So I thought, oh, maybe they in Vietnam before and before in love with Vietnamese women and now I can take the picture and letter and back and forth and things like that. But what they really want me to do is to tell them briefly how is Vietnamese communist work? How many Russia is here in Vietnam? And what happened to all the military base and supply and war equipment? What happened to all of them? If I can report on that to them, they will pay me to come back to Vietnam. And I looked at them and I said, you asked me to do something, let's buy. They said, oh no, no, nothing like that. Yes, but something like that. And I said, I just can't do that for you. I don't write that well, and I don't have anybody to help me with that. And they said, oh, you don't have to do it. Have your family write on down, and you just bring it out. And I look at them, and I say, you know, you want me to be a spy. That means war, and I don't want war. I want peace. And he said, Mrs. Heslip, you are a U.S. citizen. You have to help us to tell us about the communists. Because to have peace in America, you have to keep the communists out there. And we need to know how they run their country and how the Russian that in uh, uh, helping supporting them. And I got a little upset now, and I say, you know, you a man, I'm a woman. You American, I am Vietnamese. You want war, I want peace. You want hatred, and I want compassion. And I want to do that with or without you helping me. And so I asked them to leave my house. Very unhappy, and we both very unhappy. But that's moment I already decided that I have to stand up and let them know that war is not going to work. 
There's so much war here already. We don't need any more war. So first thing first, I sold my restaurant, and I sold my two houses, and I moved into a small house, something like this, so that I can able